Here I got a pyrolysis reactor, and here I got a bag full of coffee grounds with the plastic and aluminum packaging. Let's put two and two together. What do you get when you pyrolysize coffee ground? There's a, a layer of carbon at the bottom of this reactor right now. That's all that there is in there. Um, so this will just be pure coffee grounds going in here. Alright, so that's about like, it's almost the whole bag that I've had of these fit in there. A lot of air space between them, but it doesn't really matter. So, the last part that you need for microwave pyrolysis is a catalyst, which is just any type of material that will aid in microwave absorption and allow the heat to develop on the surface to break down the organic molecules so I typically use a catalyst of carbon and calcium oxide or lime but since we're trying to you know kind of do a little experiment here I just do the baseline which is just carbon and this is actually carbon from previous pyrolysis reactions so you see it's a nice fine powder you don't need much because really what happens is once the reaction gets started you know some carbon well, actually, okay, let, let me give you an example. So let's look at this carbon on here, right? This carbon is going to get super hot from the microwaves, like red hot, over a thousand degrees. It's going to pyrolysize the plastic that's sitting up on it, and then the coffee grounds under it, and they will become carbon. And then that will form another powder layer of carbon that will then sink down, and it will just keep making a, a positive feedback reaction until it reaches down to the bottom. So you really don't need much to start. In fact, this is usually as much as you need right here. You know, if you add too much, well, I haven't really noticed anything bad, but, you know, um, you don't need that much. So, this is all we need, and we're going to go ahead and get her running. All right, well, let's go ahead and put this lid on, on the gasket, and get her tightened down. All right, the lid is on, everything is wired up, and uh, let's get it started. I almost forgot we need to make the atmosphere inert. And how do we do such a thing? Well, we have this right here. This is compressed syngas, and we're going to pump this in there. Listen closely and hear it. Beautiful. You hear that? It's in there, baby. So, I'm going to open this valve because you can tell how the reaction is going based off of the gas formation in the beginning and how it looks. As we see, there are vapors escaping within the first couple seconds. That's usually a good sign. Usually, a good sign of good quality pyrolysis gas is one, it has this nice white smoky look like a cloud almost and two it will be flammable I will stop laying this out into the atmosphere now have it go through the condensing system and then the filtering system for it is to be collected. All formed gases after traveling through this pilgrimage of a condensing and filtering system will empty themselves into this here reservoir, this inner tube. And just to confirm that this is real, if I take this tube out, 
Which, by the way, this tube does go to the filter. There is gas coming out, hardly visible to the human eye. A flame is always visible, for it is built into our survival self to know a good fire when we see one. And this, this is going right into here. Beautiful. It will Indeed. run this reaction for a total of six hours. That is from now, which is two o'clock until eight o'clock. Then we will see the level of degradation occurred that has been bestowed upon the former coffee grounds as well as their packaging. As well as we will see the oil, the gas, and the carbon yield, baby. Beautiful. After about 10 minutes, the inner tube is full. Let's take a look at the contents. Flame is almost invisible, but the parts that you can see are... Uh, they're quite hot. Well, I guess you can't really see that, but I, I feel it. It's pretty hot. You know, this can be used in a stove, you know, a heater, all those good appliances that you use propane or natural gas for. And it's really the same thing. Let's see if we got any oil so far. All right. Oh, there is some oil. You see that? This little drops. I mean, it's only 10 minutes in. What do you expect? More, probably like 15. Let's check this oil's burn content. Will it light on the ground? Let us see. No, it does not. You know, everything yields different types of oils. Some oils, they light to a flame, some oils don't. More kind of like diesel than gasoline, right? It's been about an hour and a half. Let's see if any more oil has been produced. Okay. So, you saw, we got some more drops. Probably, for the maximum output of oil, we probably won't get that until the end of the reaction. But, and there's some more oil there. Once again, quite a bit of water in there. Kind of as expected, right? It's been about six hours, eight o'clock right now. I gotta wait for this thing to cool off before I can open it up. But the issue is, by the time it cools off, it'll be so dark out here, we won't be able to see anything. So, don't mean to leave you on a cliffhanger, but we will have to, there's a little spider, hey, there's a little spider on the reactor, what the hell? You see that? Yo, buddy, you wanna get off of there, dog? Yeah, yeah, that's right, get on, come here, let's, let's get out of here, buddy. Still producing flammable gas. Let's look at the oil yield before I turn this off. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, the fact that we put, you know, we filled this up with the coffee ground. It's been six hours. And the fact that it's still producing gas and fuel. It goes to show that pyrolysis is the way to manage waste. Because we are not letting waste go to waste. The amount of energy is crazy. Six hours. So we got some more oil. The the oil yields on this um, have been very low. I really wasn't expecting that much. More gas than anything. Look at that. Beautiful flame. That's not even cleaned up or anything. Alright, it's the next morning. Let's open her up and see what we got on the inside. Before I open it. What do you think is going to look like on the inside? What will be your theory? 
me personally, my theory is there will be quite a bit of it that was broken down, but there will also be quite a bit that hasn't been broken down, probably because we didn't run it for long enough, or simply because the microwaves can only penetrate so much at once. So let's see. Oh, interesting. It smells like coffee in here. So, you can see some of it has become absolute carbon. Look at that. It's absolute, like, you know, you can see, like, this This used to be um, the coffee grounds. Oh, I can't even pick it up. It's so fragile and brittle. We can also see some of the aluminum caps. The tops are completely recoverable. Oh, look at that. Some of it just absolutely crumbles apart. Like, you see that? Like, that's like the coffee within the pod, and it's just so brittle. It just falls apart. And it looks like, yeah, the theory was right. A lot of it didn't break down, actually, because a lack of agitation. The ones that did break down, I mean, they're absolutely just gone, you know? It's just carbon now. So you probably just have to run this thing longer, or, it, you know course like you know microwaves your house have like a turntable right you can see there's just some coffee in that one there so i honestly think this just needs more time um to run you know which isn't necessarily a bad thing because there's still you're still getting energy no matter how long it takes but you see we can completely recover all these aluminum scraps from the tops and everything else just becomes absolute carbon um and then we do still have gas. We did get some oil from this. Not much. So I guess that's what happens when you, uh, you pyrolysize coffee. Coffee pods. I mean, like halfway, I guess. Uh, how long we had this? We had this running for six hours. I think if we had it running for like, like 10 or 12, then it would be completely done. But, you know, it's kind of hard because the microwaves, they're really unpredictable. You know, we can see they clearly were focusing in the center, which I guess that's where the magnetron is on the lid. It's right above it in the center. So like that, all that is being hit. Well, all this is kind of not as much. So like that's what happens. And that is also the benefit of a catalyst. Like if I just put a catalyst around the outside here, maybe the microwaves would just hit that. But yeah, that's really what happens. I mean, I... We can finish this reaction, but it's going to be the same stuff. It's going to be the same type of gas produced, same type of oil. Um, I will say, the pyrolysis gas did smell like coffee. So, <laughs> that was pretty cool. I mean, slightly like coffee, of course. The rest of it smelled like melted plastic and aluminum. So, not really that good. But, it had a slight hint of coffee in it. So, that was, that was something new. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we're going to try and pyrolysize wood chips and see what happens. Because this process is not limited to just plastic, any type of organic thing, even your enemies. Take care.